much for this afternoon. I always enjoy this. I, I came to the one that you had four years ago, and I also came to the provincial one when we had the provincial. And they're all very interesting, and people's ideas are all very good. So, uh, but in this time of change at provincial and regional levels, it's important to have experienced and knowledgeable leadership. And I'm proud of my record of leadership and hard work and experience. Because we don't know what's going to happen with this provincial government. We don't know. We now put millions into discretionary funds. We don't know if that $10 per person is going to go. Those kind of things. But I do want to get on to the issues at the tables. Because at my tables, there were two main issues. One was free public transit, and the other was affordable housing. Now, I have to tell you, free public transit is probably not going to happen because we have to have a balance between tax increases and helping people in need. And that, that is a difficult, it's a difficult situation because there are a lot of people, as you know, that don't like transit and they don't like cycling and they don't like sidewalks. And so we have to find that balance there to see. That doesn't mean though that we should have really high transit fees. And I was very glad that we did not raise the transit fares this past year. And I'm glad that we have a, a pilot project with the poor people looking at reduced fares and what we can do about that. We also have a number of programs that give people free bus tickets for various things like going to the doctor and so on. So uh, that, that's it. And I, I think I need to tell you too, with transit, we are improving transit. Um, I take the bus. I think many of you know that I take the bus a lot. And uh, the other day I was, it was 9.30, and in the evening I was going to number 9 from, from uh, Conestoga Mall. And uh, at that time, there's people that work at the comf, in the comfort industries, so the, the bus goes around there. And then all of a sudden we stopped in the middle of nowhere and a whole bunch of people got on the bus. And I was like, I asked one of the ladies and she said, I said, where did they come from? Well, they came from St. Jacob's from the outlet mall, and they've had to walk through a dark trail to get there. So when I got home, I looked at the 2018 transit upgrade, and I was very happy to see that we are adding buses into that area, up to St. Jacob's, later at night, and that was very good. So I haven't even got, I've got 30 seconds, and I haven't even got to affordable housing. So I just want to talk about homelessness, because what's happened is, of course, we've lost a lot of they weren't very nice rooming houses, but they were rooming houses. Uh, we have the problem of opioids, and I was talking with uh, people from show, and uh, once again, I'm going to say that homeless people need supports. And people don't like me saying this. You can get housing for people, but they do, a lot of the chronically homeless do need supports. And that's what we need to work on, as well as finding them a place to live. So uh, I'll just say that uh, janemitchell.ca, if you want to find out about me and my cards are at the back. Thank you for being interested enough in your community to give up a Sunday afternoon when you could have been raking leaves, pushing them to the curb. Um, but anyway, thank you for being here. Here's a, a thumbnail sketch. Um, I'm a, a candidate to represent the city of Waterloo on regional council. I was born and raised in the great metropolis of Wallace home of the Apple Butter and Cheese Festival. I've um, lived here in um, Waterloo for um, all of my adult working years. Um, there's a, a business called Urban Good Family Funeral Home, just about two um, building blocks, or not building blocks, but um, lots from here that um, where I owned and, and worked for um, 30 years. I'm, I'm there part-time now. Um, much of my volunteer work in the last um, 10 or 15 years has been with the not-for-profit sector in Kitchener, Waterloo, and working mainly with people who have been marginalized because of a variety of conditions that are not their fault, um, trying to provide um, affordable housing, um, food, um, with the House of Friendship on the new addiction treatment center. So I have a, a strong interest in issues of social justice, um, and. Um, I look forward to being able to be to put some of that to use at the region where so much of the emphasis now is on social justice issues in, in the region. Some of the um, issues that were talked about at um, the tables I sat at were um, that intensification has called um, has been a cause of um, gentrification. 
Um, affordable housing um, is a result of that, and, and how are we going to um, solve that problem? Um, I, I think I'm correct that the, the LRT project was approved in 206 or 207, and we're building it and completing it now. I, I wish we would have had a conversation in the last 10 years leading up to this, is what was going to happen with the displacement of people. Did we not realize this was going to happen? So now we begin the conversation of um, how are we going to house the people who have been displaced by the intensification because of the LRT. And it's a conversation we have to have, and I, I just wish we could have had it um, when, the, when the project was approved, knowing that this was going to be some of the consequences. Housing for me is a human right. Everybody deserves a place that's safe and clean to sleep at night. And we just have to give some attention to that. And so I hope that's a big conversation that we can have. Um, the other one was um, transit. Um, I um, should be providing um, subsidized or, or free. Um, I'm not sure free is in the cards, but I think we do have to look at how we're going to get the people um, who have been displaced able to use the LRT because they can't afford to get cars. Thank you. Thanks to everyone for coming this afternoon. I'd like to thank the Social Development Council. And I'd also like to thank First United Church for your ongoing commitment to these kinds of public forums and also to social justice. I know this is the first out of the cold program to be established in Waterloo Region a number of years ago. And thank you very much for that and your continued interest in social justice issues and to all the churches in our community, which really form a backbone around having these kinds of conversations and really um, starting regional governments and municipal governments to try to understand a little bit more what's actually happening in our community. So I think this has been a very great uh, exercise here this afternoon. And I'm not going to give you a political speech. I was here to listen today uh, and to learn some things from citizens about what they would like to see happen in their, in their community, what they'd like to see happen from the region of Waterloo. So there's a few things. First of all, I only have three minutes, I think. Two minutes left. So, in the one in the one group, we had uh, seven pages of ideas. So I thought I could lobby the organizers for seven minutes of responses. But I don't I don't think that's going to happen. We're going to hit on, hit on a few key themes. We spent a lot of time at one table as that about homelessness and the opioid crisis and what we need to do about that. And uh, I think uh, Mike Savage made a really good point when he said that no one really wants to be homeless, and they're homeless for a variety of different reasons. And in order for us to solve the homelessness problem, or at least alleviate it, we need to have complex solutions to what's a very complex problem. We sure we need bricks and mortar, but we also need supportive housing. We need to help people transition into housing and give them the support so they can be successful. One new idea was with all of the people who are sleeping in our community in tents and in green spaces, is maybe we can organize some volunteers to go out and help uh, interface with those people and connect them to programs. So I think that was a great idea. Uh, another thing we talked about was the countryside line and urban planning. And one of the things I mentioned was that we want to protect the countryside line, but we can't have it both ways. I met a lot of people during this campaign who say, yes, I support the countryside line, but I don't want that apartment in my neighborhood. So you have to be, you know, we have to be careful, but we want to protect the countryside line, but that means we need to have intensification. But when we have intensification, we need to do a better job of communicating with our neighbors and our community about what's going in to the neighborhood and how we can work together with that development. That's also related to affordable housing because you can put in place a density bonus where if the developer says they're going to build 10 floors, you can say as a city, let's build 11 and make that last floor affordable housing. So those are a couple of ideas. One last idea is traffic flow. I talked to a gentleman about Caroline Street right here and how tight it is and when the LRT comes, how difficult it's going to be to get in and out. There's a company in Waterloo called Myovision. They do real-time traffic analysis and can control signalization based on when the LRT crosses, based on the amount of traffic that is along a corridor. And we can use that technology uh, to improve traffic flow right through the city and right here at this corner. So thanks very much. There's a few ideas I heard uh, and many more, but I don't have seven minutes. So uh, thanks a lot uh, for coming out. To learn more about me, go to SeanStrickland.com. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, I didn't write anything in advance. I wanted to come here and listen, and I've heard a lot. Um, I'd just like to tell you a little bit about me before I kind of repeat back what I've heard. I get asked a lot, uh, you know, being 
younger and, and, and new, this is the first time I've ever run for politics, why I'm here, why I'm doing this. And I think fundamentally, things don't change unless we change things. And we need to, as a community, figure out what our priorities are and how we're actually working towards those priorities. One of the things that I have been quite um, uh, uh, upset with is the lack of representation on our municipal government. We are not seeing a municipal government, a municipal infrastructure system that reflects the diversity of our community. And how are we going to have a diversity of opinion at the table? How are we going to be thinking about marginalized people, thinking about people who are left out of policy decisions, who are left out of, 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 of stakeholder um, uh, meetings, if we aren't actively seeking those voices, promoting those voices, and including those voices? So that's one reason why I'm running. I, I look different, I sound different than other candidates. <laughs> and I think that's important. And I think it's important to give people the choice. So that's why I'm here, I'm here to give you a choice. I come from the tech sector. I worked on Parliament Hill. I worked for Jack Layton. He taught me a lot about what it means to care and to, and to be accountable for what you do and what you say. So I promise you, I can't promise you that I won't make mistakes. I can't promise you that I know everything, but I promise you that I will be accountable to you. I will acknowledge my mistakes when I've made them. I will learn from them. What I've heard today has been what I've been hearing for the last you know, two months of this campaign. Affordable housing. We need to make sure that we as a community are addressing our needs and we need to make sure that people have houses over their head, like roofs over their heads. And the fact that we are failing on that is, is unconscionable. We have thousands of empty apartments near the university that are going to waste. We have refugees, government assisted refugees that have been on waiting lists. They are stuck in, in houses on David Street and they have nowhere to go. That's somewhere for them to go. Getting around, it doesn't have to be that difficult to get around, to use the sidewalk, to use the buses. We need to think about who's actually receiving these services and how do we make them work for us. So we need to look at, as a community, how we can bring diverse voices, diverse opinions to the table and we can grow together. We can be innovative. We can lead. We don't have to follow. We can make better decisions. But what we need to do, and the first step to doing that, is making sure that when we, when we have an election, when we have an opportunity to change things, that we take advantage of it. So my website is bsan.ca, that's how you spell my name, B-E-I-S-A-N.ca. I have a lot of ideas there, and I look forward to uh, meeting all of you after this. Thank you.